some of the things that I've learned about God and faith and my relationship with God uh, were contained in books, but most of them were brought to me in relationships um, by people that I respected, by people that I trusted, um, from unlikely sources. I think spiritual direction is about the books and the techniques, but it's really about the relationships and who you trust um, and who can help you um, find your way with our loving Savior. So spiritual direction is a series of conversations between two people, or you can do it in a small group, seeking the spiritual direction for your life. So even though oftentimes we refer to the person who's facilitating the conversation as the spiritual director and the person with whom they are talking as the directee, actually both of them are the directees of the spirit. And the spiritual director has the responsibility of learning how to discern the movement of the spirit. And it is a spiritual discernment journey. So that the person who's in spiritual direction, oftentimes called the directee, is learning how to, using their spiritual disciplines, to listen to the voice of the spirit Dr. Howard Thurman called that the voice of the genuine inside you. What you're really trying to discover is the movement of your heart and how the Spirit is moving in your heart and moving in your life. And it is a check-in about your spiritual disciplines. What is your practice of, say, daily meditation, mindfulness, contemplation, prayer, whatever term you use there, journaling, retreats, having a Sabbath rhythm in your life. All those are the spiritual disciplines that a directee and a director check in on in the service of reading the spiritual direction of a person's life. You know, my experience with spiritual direction is that it is an opportunity to walk alongside in a very sacred way with people in um, wondering, listening for, where is God working in our life right now? And so I've been on both sides of spiritual direction as a directee and have found for me that spiritual direction is a, a really unique place where I can be with someone and speak about what's happening in my spiritual life in a way that helps me to understand where God might be leading me. So for me, that's basically it, that spiritual direction is an opportunity for holy relationship to discern where the Spirit is working in one's life. Well, I think spiritual direction is an art. It's, it's, a, it's an art that allows people to be able to recognize the presence of the divine in the daily experiences of our lives. Uh, many people tend to go to churches to experience God, uh, to experience the divine. But spiritual direction is an art and an opportunity that allow us to recognize that God is everywhere and that the spiritual part of creation is within us and around us all the time. So it brings us that. It helps us to develop the ability to recognize that. Well, that's a lot to fit in. Uh, spiritual direction, what is spiritual direction? Um, spiritual direction to me can mean a lot of things. If I had to describe it in terms of just a general sense, I would say it's someone guiding you through um, 
meditation or prayer or reading a book together and just kind of making your life more valuable by enriching it. Spiritual direction is not counseling. Um, it's not spiritual advice for the most part. Um, it may be um, you being accountable for things that you've um, said that you were going to do spiritually. Many people have a rule of life or they have readings that they do every day. Um, so you're kind of saying, well, I've fallen a little short this, you know, this week, but these are the things that I'm doing to broaden my spiritual life. And it keeps it on top of mind when you're doing something throughout the day. How does this impact my spiritual life? And how does that broaden my relationship with God? What are other names that people call spiritual direction? So um, I have heard holy listening. I have heard spiritual companions. Um, I have personally struggled with the terminology of spiritual direction because a director isn't directing you anywhere. They're walking alongside. So, um, but we need language to create. Um, I mean, we're always trying to talk about the ineffable. We call this beautiful ineffable being uh, imminent, beautiful presence God. So we struggle with language. And um, those are the names I've heard for spiritual direction. Everybody can benefit from spiritual direction. There's nobody who cannot benefit from spiritual direction. Um, there's a saying uh, from the tradition in the church about a private confession that says, all may, none must, some should. That probably applies to spiritual direction. All may, all will benefit. None absolutely have to, but some of us really should. Well, the benefits um, for spiritual direction for me have been just wholeness of life, uh, just having a fullness, a sense of almost living and I'm no by means perfect, but I would say living like a Franciscan, uh, having a rule of life, and having someone to hold you accountable to enrich your spirituality. A session normally is just a conversation with your spiritual director, usually 45 minutes to an hour. Um, they generally ask you, um, times that you've been close to God um, since you've last met. Um, you know, what are you doing spiritually? Um, what have you heard? Um, how you are addressing things in your life uh, from a spiritual standpoint. So it's a very relaxing uh, conversation and you, it's different from counseling in that you know that there is a spiritual presence between you and the other person um, in, that, in that meeting. Well, I think that one issue always is, where do I, do I start? I think that if the person is, um, is in a church, uh, there are resources that the uh, rector of the church have. I mean, there are a list of names of spiritual directors for the Episcopal Church. Um, the person also can go to the website, the diocese website, and look for the Commission of Spirituality and identify who the chair of that commission is, and that person will be able to refer them to a spiritual direction. But I think spiritual direction is something, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. The world is evolving. Um, for my grandparents, going to the doctor was the thing to do, you see? And then for my parents, that generation, you know, for my generation, going to the doctor and going to a psychological therapy 
was the thing to do. And I think that we're moving more to going to the doctor, going to the psychological therapist, and going to your spiritual director. And, and I, f I have hope on that process because it means that we are going to be able to, I mean, we're moving toward developing a sense of health that is more holistic, that includes body, mind, and soul. And those things need to be connected. So I think that everybody should go. Well, you know, I think finding a spiritual director and finding the right spiritual director are sister questions. So to find a spiritual director, it depends on where you are, but there is the Spiritual Directors International website, which has listing of affiliated spiritual directors. In the Diocese of Alabama, where we are, on our diocesan website, we have a list of spiritual directors that um, we're aware of. There are probably more than that. And it's never a bad idea to check with your clergy person and see if they know of some spiritual directors. To find the right spiritual director that's a good fit for one, I think it's a good thing to try to sit with someone and let them know as you, before you make the appointment that you are looking for a director. And the truth is, a spiritual direction partnership is a mutual discernment. So not only is the directee determining, is this somebody with whom I can work, but the director also is discerning, is this really someone that's being called to me? And there's no right or wrong answer, and there's no failure in this. It's simply about fit. The benefits of spiritual direction are um, that you are on the right path, that things, the feedback that you're getting from people you're interacting with and your spiritual director is that you are moving in the right direction, that things that you'd hoped would be addressed in your life are being addressed in your life. Um, and, and you may get um, um, s some clues to things that you could do to broaden that effectiveness in your life. Something else that my spiritual director that, that helped me a lot and, and, and when I think of spiritual direction, I, I have to think about this, was the validation of my own gifts. Um, I think that I struggled with saying, why me? Why me? And my spiritual director helped me a lot in being able to see me from a completely different perspective um, in a much more compassionate and holy way than what I have ever seen myself before um, without judgments of being a sinner or a saint or devilish or angelic with, I mean, removing all those labels. So I think it was very important. I have experienced spiritual direction with long-term relationships with two different spiritual directors, and they both have been uh, wonderful for me, the right person at the right time. Twice when I was in retreat, once in California and once in Georgia, I had a one-time session of spiritual direction. And each of those one-time sessions were phenomenally important in my spiritual life. So the one in Augusta, Georgia at the Order of St. Helena was with uh, Sister Ros Rosina Ampa, a, an Episcopal priest who's also a sister from Ghana. And I was there at a retreat with Reverend Cynthia Bourgeau. And when we sat down, I hadn't told Sister Rosina that there was any part of me that was wondering if I was being called to be a priest. She didn't know me at all. I asked her about her experience of becoming a priest and as she told her story I cried and cried and cried and with a wisdom beyond knowing Sister Rosina looked forward at me and said when are you going to become a priest and I cried and I didn't know how she knew that this was something on the horizon and I gave her a million different reasons why I could not be a priest and she gave me a line from her native Ghana, and she said, 
Maybe you've been given a beautiful bird and you keep plucking all the feathers. And so we had a long conversation and I promised to pray about it. And it was that very night that I got on my knees and prayed and came to a sense of peace about offering myself in this way to God, knowing there was a higher likelihood that I would not become a priest than that I would become a priest, but at least I would offer myself in this way. And that clarity came from one spiritual direction session with someone who didn't know me. So the hesitation I have in telling the story in this way is that there will be a sense that, oh, spiritual directions like magic and all of a sudden I will know my vocation. And that's not really the case. But there are times when we stop long enough with someone who holds a close love of Christ and a holy space that truths can be revealed that we didn't even know were right near the surface. I think people need to pamper themselves in, in kind of getting their feet wet in spiritual direction. It changes the way that you look at the world and the way that you interact with God in that world. I'm glad to recommend spiritual direction for people. Um, it's something that people should look into. Um, like all ministries of the church, there are some people who will respond to this and other people who won't. There are some people who should be in the choir and other people who shouldn't. There are some people who get something out of Christian formation or Curcio or, or you know, mission trips and some people that that's not for. So I'm glad that we have this as an opportunity within the diocese, within the parishes, um, for people to explore and see if this is something that would be useful to them. Um, all of us need help. All of us need guidance. I certainly do. Um, as we go about fulfilling our baptismal vows to s continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to proclaim the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, to turn away from ourselves and turn back to God when we um, have gone astray, to seek and serve Christ in all persons and love our neighbors as ourselves, to strive for justice and peace among every human being and respect everyone's dignity. That's a lot. That's hard. Uh, we will do those things with God's help, but all of us need guidance and all of us need a companion.